Hello, you guys. Welcome, 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 welcome. So this is my first movie review of 2022. I hope you guys are enjoying them. I only did one so far, but I hope you guys are enjoying it because I like movies, okay? So I'm going to do the movies that I've watched and that I've liked in hopes that you guys, you know, engage with the reviews and um, enjoy it. And watching movies and watching horror films and documentaries is something I'm really, really into. I've always wanted to do my own screenplay and documentary. So I will be incorporating this into Hey DFW. And hopefully you guys can enjoy the reviews as well as uh, my commentary and um, interviews that I do with the local entrepreneurs. All right. So today we are doing The Manor. The movie um, came out in 2021. And I was in the mood for a good horror movie and I decided to watch The Manor and I must say I was very, very pleased. Um, again, the movie came out in 2021 and it was written by Axel Caroline and was produced by Blumhouse. And I really like most of Blumhouse films. They produce movies such as The Purge, Sinister, and Paranormal Activity. So I really like their quality and how they produce films. So the movie starts off with Judith Albright and she's a former dancer and she's celebrating her birthday. And I believe she's turning like 70 or 71 and she falls out due to like a minor stroke. So her daughter puts her in a nursing home and now, you know, the home is nice. The staff seems nice. But Judith doesn't seem like she fits in. So she looks around and she sees, you know, people who, you know, are older and who need more assistance and that may be experiencing memory loss, need additional eating and things of that sort. And I could, you know, say that that, that could be, as a person who is aging, that could kind of be... A little bit of a challenge to your mental health is like, wow, my family put me here and these people are on this end. And I'm just kind of like, I had like a little minor stroke, so I don't feel like I need to be here, but I am here. And, you know, the movie goes through with her taking that all in. And, you know, you don't really think about these kind of things when you're in your 20s and when you're in your 30s. But when you're in your 40s, you do think about, okay, how is life going to be when I get old? How am I going to, you know, what? how am I going to take care of myself? Wh what is going to happen? And things of that sort. And I think it's something that needs to be discussed a bit more, but it's not. And this movie really highlights that. Like, what are you going to do? Okay, so I do really like that. Um, so being that Judith is a dancer, and I don't even know if I covered this yet, but, you know, she's she's she used to be a dancer in, in her younger years. And so she's actually very well kept for her age. So her body's intact. She dresses nice. And you know, she knew that she didn't fit in. Her discernment was like, you know what, well, y'all, I don't belong here. Y'all can keep this. But, you know, her, her daughter put her in there so she can get the care that she needs. So uh, moving along, she ends up befriending like three other residents of the home, um, one by the name of Roland, Trish, and another lady named Ruth. Now, I want to give Ruth her credit Ruth, um, is, she's an, an older black lady, but her picture was not on the IMDB website. So let me um, uh, share my screen real quick. Let's see. All right. So this is the person right here that they have as um, Ruth. Now she's affiliated with the character Ruth, but this is not the woman. I'm going to stick her image here where the actual woman who played the Ruth that Judith befriended um, into, um, into the stream. 
um, shortly. So, but well, before it's over, if you look, guys will see her picture. So, um, well, actually, let me see. Um, can I uh, go to it now? Um, I just my, one of my things I didn't want to do was go to it and um, show it while I was um, in the midst of recording but let's see i really i really want to give her uh her credit so let's share again bear with me you guys all right so this black lady right here on the far right that is the roof i don't see her anywhere on imbd so but that that is ruth that's rolling right there and that is trish um with the turtleneck on and that is um judith right there with the long hair very very nice um well kept people right all right so let's go back to um the stream okay so um now that we've gotten that out of the way so back to the movie so Judith, you know, she seems to be getting along with these ladies and Roland. And Roland is actually, you know, he's he's flirting, y'all. He putting his bid in. He sees some new fresh meat in town at the um nursing home. And Roland's like, you know what I'm saying? What's up? What's up? You know what I'm saying? She was like, uh, right, you know, hey, uh, give me 50 feet, Roland. I'm good right now. Um, you know, I'm just just kind of just Peeping out the scene, peeping out the scene, okay? So Roland is definitely one of those guys that, you know, you see out and he is immediately like on top of you trying to like buy you a drink and talk to you. And you just kind of like, hey, and we just walked in. Me and my girls just walked in. Let's just listen to some music for a while. I'll get back with you. I'll dance with you in a second, okay, Roland? That's what you got to tell guys like Roland because uh, they see something new. They, they want to get in there real quick, okay? Anyways, so when everyone is asleep at night, I mean, it's really creepy around there. It's really dark, you guys. And, you know, she has a roommate. Her roommate is like a mute. She can't speak, but, you know, she's quiet. She keeps to herself. Um, but she's a little weird. She's a little weird. Like most roommates can be just a little weird. And so one night, Judith decides, you know, well, let, me, let me check on her. Let me see if she's okay. So she pulls back the curtain. And she sees a dark figure standing over her roommate. And Judy's like, guys, freaked out. I was like, oh my gosh, let me. All right, you know what? I didn't see this just now. I didn't see this. So Judith just can't believe what she's seeing. She jumps back into the bed and just like, I just need to go to sleep. I just need to go to sleep. So, you know, moving forward, she tries to talk to the lady and the lady just like doesn't speak. She's trying to figure out what's wrong. But Judith has been having these vivid dreams and things of that sort. And just weird stuff has been going on and happening. And Judith is trying to get to the bottom of it. And she's, you know, she's talking to the lady and the lady's just like not giving, not giving. But she looks scared and nervous and just filled with anxiety every time. So finally... Judith's like, okay, she tries to talk to the lady again, and the lady speaks, and she gives Judith a message, and she dies. Like, she dies. She dies, and she also gives Judith something in her hand, too, and in her hand, it's a list, and the list is, like, a list of names, everybody that has passed, and Judith's name is next on the list. So Judith just like goes and she looks under her bed and she finds like, I don't know, I don't know, I'm going to call it a token or something, but she finds something under her bed and she's like weird out about it. So she was like, you know what, I'm going to talk to somebody about it. So she talks to her grandson and just like most grandparents, Judith is really close with her grandson, okay? And, you know, she tells him, hey, listen, it's some freaking stuff going on around here. I want to get out. I'm not happy. And, you know, you hear your grandma talking about ghosts and near-death experiences. You're like, all right, you know, grandma's kind of, you know, she's ready to go to glory. Or in his case, you know, grandma losing her, his mind, her mind. So he was like, eh, a little skeptical about it. So she convinces her grandson, listen, I have got to get out of here. Can you please give me the code? Because they have a code where the residents can't get out. So he gives her the code and she gets out. 
she gets out, you know, and you know, is looked at as okay, an old person escaping the nursing home. So she's meeting with her daughter and her grandson the next day at like a local diner. And her daughter was like, you know, if you want us to just do this little breakfast thing once a week, just say that, you know, just, just, just let us know. You don't have to do this. You don't have to, to make a scene out of it. And just was like, no, it's something going on. And she's like, mom, you know, come on. Like, there's nothing going on. You are here for your, you know, for your, for your health. We're trying to take care of you. So her daughter necessarily wasn't callous, but it was also kind of like one of those things where adults do run into, like, who's going to take care of mom? Who's going to take care of dad? And she just made this decision because in her life, she either A, doesn't really have the time or B, doesn't feel like she can give her the care that she needs. So I don't think Judah's daughter was necessarily trying to, you know, be callous and things of that sort. But I do feel like sometimes as adults, you can forget about your parents, the people you know that took care of you because your life is so busy. I think sometimes kids can become selfish in that way. So I do think it was a little selfish, but at the same time, you have to look at it. Well, if I'm at work and something happens, then I'm, is this my fault? So that's kind of how I felt um, for her daughter. But anyways, Judith was like, well, you know what? Let me just go to the restroom. So she was like, "I'm just." she just went to the restroom and just kind of like had to, you know, gather herself. Like, am I going crazy? Is this... Am I just seeing these things just because? And she leaves the restroom and she sees these pictures. And in these pictures are Roland, Trish, and Ruth from 50 years ago. And they still look the same. They're like chilling, hanging out. Like, wait a minute. I know y'all were not this old 50 years ago. And why are y'all still here now? So she comes out and she's like, friends are like, hey, y'all need to see these pictures. Y'all need to see these pictures. They are, um, it's the same ones. It's the same ones from the nursing home. And before she could just kind of like get her bearings, the, her, her daughter called other the nursing home people to come and get her. So they come and got her. And it was just kind of like, it was a bit much for me. She should have to me talked her daughter into getting in the car and I'm going to take you back. But instead, it looked like they just kind of like, come on, come on, you know, like manhandle her and stuff. And she was telling her grandson, you got to believe me. Please look at the pictures. So her grandson was like, you know, felt that something was wrong. So her grandson goes to the back and he looks at the pictures and he sees the people that... Judith was talking about. So now he believes her. Now he believes her. So with that being said, um, let me, sorry, let me go to my notes again. So later on, like moving down in the movie, um, her son comes and she was like, you know, you got to get me out of here, but we need to go by Roller's room. And he was like, okay. So they get in Roland's room. And of course, you know, Roland comes in there and they hide under the bed. Okay. They hide under the bed. And Roland, you know, just all of a sudden disappears. He takes off his shoes and he just disappears. And Jimmy was like, did you, did you just, where is he? And her grandson was like, Grandma, no, like, don't get from under the bed. It can be dangerous. So Judah gets up anyways. And I did well actually, but we let's back back. But she gets up anyways. But before then, when she was snooping around his room, you guys, she saw a lock of her hair in his room, which is very creepy. So she saw a lock of her hair in his room. So now let's go back. So she saw the lock of her hair, they hid under the bed, and Roland just disappeared. So we're here now. So Roland disappeared. She looks out the window, and you guys, Roland was like crawling on the side of the building. Crawling on the side of the building, y'all. And instead of her just freaking out, I would have screamed. But she did not. She was like, oh my gosh, we have to follow him. My grandson was like, uh, okay, I guess. So they follow him. And they go to like the forest nearby because that's where Roland was. And it was him, Trish, and Ruth out there, like in these cult-like robes, 
Um, like doing some witchcraft stuff, some witchcraft stuff, like a little bonfire stuff going on. And he had a lock of hair and he was like, you know, Hey, I hereby give you Judas. So he was basically going to drop this hair in the fire and her grandson like saw that and was like, no, don't do it. And he ran out. And so I was like, oh, okay, so what do we have here? You know, and then they did the confrontation. So basically, so basically what was going on is, you know, they were sacrificing people and they were sacrificing people in the nursing home so they can have everlasting life. So it's kind of like drinking out the fountain of youth, but with a darky before it's helping you. So they were able to live forever if they sacrifice somebody. And Roland's like, listen, boo, um, they're going to die anyway. They're going to die anyway. So we just, you know, kind of sped up the process. It's a small price to pay. You know, they don't have that long to live anyway. It's a small price to pay and you get to live forever. We're just speeding up the process. It doesn't really hurt anybody. You know, and Judith was like, I don't know. I don't know. This is, this is wrong. So she overpowers him and, you know, fights that battle with Roland. So once she fights that battle with Roland, the two other ladies are left and they're like, well, Judith, you know, if you want to join us, you can. And Judith was like actually thinking about it. Now, I would have been like, hold on. Did y'all like just try to kill me? Did y'all not just try to kill me? And I would have been mad. I would have been mad. I would have been in my feelings, you know. But they were like, listen, Judith, your grandson does not have to go through this loss. He does not have to you know, miss out on seeing you. He does not have to grieve for you. He does not have to see you go down like that. You can live forever if you just join us. And her son, grandson was like, you know what, grandma, I don't want to lose you. And you know how we all love our grandmas. I love my grandma, we all, and I miss her dearly. So we, all of this, so it was that, it was that bond there. And she was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and undo it. I'm gonna do it. So her her grandson decides to take part in it and um have everlasting life. So you know, and I liked the movie because you know, like I said at the beginning of the recording, it's something that we do not talk about. What happens when you get old? What happens? How are you going to take care of yourself? Who is going to take care of you? Are you going to be comfortable? And this movie addresses all that, and it does have a horror element to it. But at the same time, it is scary. It is it is scary. And, you know, it's scary to think about. I get nervous thinking about it because you want to be comfortable. You don't want to be in a, a bad nursing home where they abuse you, but you also don't want to be creeped out by ghosts and People like rolling, tripping and stuff and don't do a rich craft either. But in all seriousness, it is something to think about. And then it's also something to take, think about as, you know, a person who does have an older mom. Like, you know, I want my mom to be comfortable. I want to take care of her, you know, and, and how to position yourself into that. And a lot of families, you know, don't think about that until it's too late. So hopefully, you know, you guys watch the movie, look at it, take it for, you know, look at it in a deep, in, in, in a deepness of things and understand, you know, outside of that, the actual, the fear and the scariness of, of it about what you want your life to look like when you get older. And if you do have elderly parents, are you doing everything you can to make sure they're comfortable? Because they did take care of you. So. In the meantime, though, I do have a question for you guys. Would you sacrifice others to live forever like Judith did? Would you? Something to think about. Something to think about, you guys. All right. Well, until my next film review, make sure you like, subscribe to my channel for interviews and commentary on all things. I will see you guys.